One of the greatest problems facing our world today is our over-reliance on fossil fuels. They are dirty, polluting and a major cause of global warming. One way that we can cut down on our dependence on fossil fuels is to use alternative clean energies, such as fuel cells, which are a bit like batteries that work by pumping hydrogen through a chemical sandwich. Nice. I've come to the Department of Chemistry at the University of Bath to talk to Professor Saiful Islam about his work on fuel cells. What exactly is a fuel cell? A fuel cell um, is a bit like a, a sandwich. It's, it produces clean energy from a, a chemical reaction. Um, in fact, it's very much like a battery. You've got these two electrodes, which are the bread slices of your sandwich. Um, the bread slices, one's made of a metal, like platinum, and the other is a ceramic, like uh, an oxide. And in between those bread slices, the, the meat or cheese, if you're a veggie, is another ceramic oxide through which ions or atoms diffuse very, very quickly. And is that where the energy comes from? The energy, yes, involves applying a fuel, in this case hydrogen, which is clean, and oxygen, and the byproduct is water. You can't get any cleaner than that. And what are you doing to make these fuel cells better? Those materials I mentioned, the, the electrode materials and the bit between the electrodes, they want to develop new ones that are better and cleaner. So we're developing or trying to develop new materials that can work a lot better and a lot cleaner. What are these new materials? Well, they're all crystalline, so they're a bit like gemstones. They're made up of very regular crystal structures like these beautiful models here. And the way we're trying to understand them is not only just experiment, but by computer modelling. I see you have a lot of models around you, but you're not actually wearing a white lab coat. Do all chemists work in this way? I'm one of those few chemists that doesn't wear a white lab coat, and that's because I use computer modelling to try and understand those materials on the atomic level. Um, so what modelling does is it allows us to really get in at the crystal and understand what's going on on that atomic scale, so see how atoms move through the crystal. But also, um, modelling is very important in showing us the beauty and int intricacy of matter at the atomic level. So in some ways, and I'm very proud of this, that modelling and chemistry can be just as beautiful and creative as the arts. How do your fuel cells differ from those already in use today in the London buses or in the Toyota Prius, for example? Um, good question. I mean, the ones in the London bus and in the Toyota Prius use the same principle of fuel cells that we're looking at, but they use very polymer-based ones, plastic-based type fuel cells. The ones that we look at aren't plastic based, they're more ceramic based. So um, the gemstones I mentioned are what I call crystalline materials and we're, use, we're looking at those kind of materials instead of polymers. And when will we see these fuel cells in everyday life? Well you mentioned the, the London fuel cell buses, so they're already being trialled out in bus fleets and a few cars. Um, the next stage is trying to get them out into um, automotive industry generally, a big problem is uh, cost. They are still more expensive than the combustion engine. But in homes, um, hopefully within the next five years, in terms of heating and powering homes, there's a lovely story that during the blackout in New York, that the only buildings, the few buildings still being powered, were powered by fuel cells. And in fact, the police station at Central Park, the policemen came out not knowing there was a, a, a blackout. They came out to complete darkness because they were, um, their police station was, was powered by fuel cells. The race is on to a cleaner future and fuel cells have made a head start.